Hey everybody, how's it going? I'd like to read everybody a bedtime story. There are some questions that I keep getting regarding hiring Eugene Harrington from Gotham City Solutions. People have asked why I simply did not allow him to finish the job. They've stated that it's unfair that I judge the work before allowing him to finish the job. After I found out the quality of materials it was using, after seeing the quality of work that he had done, after realizing that he said a door was $650 when it was about $60, and after hearing his own staff seemingly, how do I put this, lack faith in him, that would be the nice way to put it. Any of the commentary that I give is of course going to be my opinion, however I will include a link at the end of the video that shows this uh, this New York County Clerk public document that any of you will be able to find. My bedtime story starts with the Supreme Court of the state of New York. So here it says they are the owners of a property in Montauk and on August 8th, 2013, plaintiff Ellen Lerner, mother of Melissa and Erica Lerner, executed a contract with defendant Eugene Harrington and defendant Gotham City Solutions to finish the basement at the premises to be used as an office, playroom, and general open space for when she came to visit her daughters at the premises. The contract with defendant Eugene Harrington and defendant Gotham City Solutions was to construct multiple bedrooms plus home theater, gum, gym, I'm guessing, that's a typo, family room, and bathroom in an unimproved 2,800 square foot ground level area. The price for the fully completed job, including but not limited to supplying all fixtures, flooring, theater seating, projection equipment, screens, wall sconce lighting fixtures, screen and screen framing curtains on screen wall and side walls was modified to $120,000 plus $5,000 for a total of $125,000, which was to include flooring. So the job is $125,000. The terms for the payment schedule were contracted and agreed to as follows. 10% of 12500 as a down payment upon acceptance of the terms. Additional 25%, $31,250 upon commencement of the work. Additional 25%, $31,250 after all rough framing and rough electrical work is complete. Additional 25%, $31,250 after all rough plumbing is complete and all walls and ceiling boards are installed and taped compounded and all doors are installed. Additional 10%, 12,500 after all electrical fixtures, plumbing fixtures, and heating fixtures are installed. And a final 5%, $6,250 after confirmation that all fixtures, climate control, and theater components are functioning properly. So that's about a $125,000 project to be paid in stages. The contract also included a clause which stated that any agreed to additions to the above scope of work will be required to be paid in full at the time of the request. Defendant Eugene Harrington informed the plaintiffs that additional work had to be completed in order to properly install the plumbing. The following payments were made by plaintiffs as a result of Eugene Harrington's representation in photographs regarding completion of various stages according to the contract. So something of interest here is that the plaintiffs are located in Florida, whereas the defendant and the place that is being worked on is in New York. So photographs are being used to judge the completion level of the project because they are not able to see it in person. So it says, A, August 8th, 2013, check for the down payment of 12500 B, August 12th, check for 25% for $31,250. I'm guessing that this zero here is an extra because whoever was typing this up probably gets as much sleep as I do. September 25th, 2013, check for 25% progress payment as reported by Eugene Harrington, $31,250. October 15th, a check for 25%. Progress payment as reported by Eugene Harrington for $31,250. During the summer and fall months of 2013, 85% of the job had been paid for based upon representation made by a defendant Eugene Harrington and accompanied by photographs demonstrating the framing. The rough electrical and the rough plumbing had been completed. However, it was subsequently discovered that the photographs had been altered or photoshopped to show completion when in reality it had not been completed by defendant Harrington. Now, I got to meet this individual in person. I saw the way that he interfaced with a phone. I saw the general comfort level that he had with a computer. I don't believe that this is a person that is Photoshopping anything. Most likely, uh, you know, Shuttershock or Google Image Search, that I could see. I think that Photoshopping, in my opinion, is outside of the intellect of this guy. I don't, I don't see that happening. 
But I do see him potentially just grabbing random photos or even grabbing photos of another job, in my opinion. This is my speculation as to what would occur in claiming that's that that is what occurred. Also, for 85% of the job to be paid during fall of 2013, so you were kind of, I'm, I can imagine that you were expecting that if the job is 85% done in three months, that you would, actually less than three months, in about two months here, that you would imagine that maybe 100% of it should be done by December or January, meaning that your timeline for this job was originally somewhere in the four to five month range. Just keep that in mind as we continue reading this so that you have an idea of what is going on here. During the summer of 2013, defendant Eugene Harrington also informed plaintiffs that additional work had to be done in order to bring plumbing down for the bathroom construction and wet bar construction. According to the contract, the customer is responsible for any repairs beyond the scope of work the upscale work that had become necessary as a result of unseen, unknown site conditions, such as existing wall damage, water damage behind walls or cabinets. Defendant Eugene Harrington represented that he had to do additional repair work to break up the basement cement floors and channel concrete for new bathroom drain system, supply and install floor drain piping for new basement bathroom, dig out foundation wall from outside, and determine point of water ingress. D, repair and seal foundation wall to prevent water that further water damage. E, Apply thorough seal brand foundation sealer to repaired areas, and F, supply and install wood trim where the new walls meet the flooring. For the extra work required, as stated by defendant Eugene Harrington, plus plaintiffs requested additions of supplying and installing hot and cold water pl uh, plumbing piping for outdoor shower and a dance gym room with mirrors and ballet bar, Defendant Eugene Harrington charged plaintiffs $23,325, and according to contract, new work orders were payable at the time of charges needed. So in addition to the $106,000 already paid by the end of fall 2013, plaintiffs had to pay an additional $10,000 for the $23,000 worth of change orders. This Does this sound at all interesting to the, or, or is familiar to where we're having a conversation about the flooring, you're trying to kind of squirmish out of having to do the bathroom, and that's the day that you, that you upsell Steve on a counter and collect a deposit on. Just kind of interesting how our stupidity seems to mirror the ignorance and gullibility of the individuals that were suing him. The new total for the completion of the entire project was now $148,325, of which plaintiffs had made payments of $116,250 by January 2014. Accordingly, plaintiffs owed only $32,075 for the rest of the job to be completed. This balance represented only 20% left on the entire job together with the additional work required. After January 1st, 2014, all work had fundamentally stopped at this point, and defendant Eugene Harrington had numerous excuses for not being able to complete the job during winter months of December 2013 to March 2014, including not being able to get his truck up the driveway because of snow. Come on. December 2013 to March 2014. Come on. I've lived here all my life. I've been here for the Staten Island blizzard in around 1995, 1996. I'm aware of how much snow can accumulate in New York. I'm fully aware of it. You got $103,000, and you're saying that for a period of three months, you're not able to get into the driveway because of snow. There's not one day of those three months where you're able to get into the driveway or where the snow goes down enough that you may be able to pick up your little shovel and pay somebody that you know 200 bucks to help you shovel before you get to the house. During the summer and fall of 2014, defendant Eugene Harrington continued to make excuses for not being able to complete the job. Plaintiffs communicated to defendant Eugene Harrington that they were commencing legal action. Now, keep, keep in mind here, this is interesting. It says that he was not able to do the work in December 2013 to March 2014 because of snow. Now, let's say that you say, I'm being too hard on him. Let's say you say, you're saying, well, Montauk snow is different than the rest of New York. How do you know there wasn't so much snow there for three straight months? How much snow do you have in the summer and fall of 2014? During the summer and fall of 2014, defendant Eugene Harrington continued to make excuses for not being able to complete the job. Plaintiffs communicated to defendant Eugene Harrington that they were now commencing legal action. Defendant Eugene Harrington requested additional time, stating that if plaintiffs allowed him to commence work again in June of 2015, he would complete the job as promised. Plaintiffs reluctantly agreed but told him they would not be getting any additional payments until the job was completed. During the summer and fall of 2015, he's saying, I can't even start up again. 
until June of 2015. So in the beginning of 2014, January, February, March, he was saying that the snow is keeping me from doing it. Then summer comes and he's not doing the job according to the documents. Then fall comes and he's not doing the job according to the document. And at that point, he doesn't even say, oh, well, there's snow again. It's December 2014. It's January 2015. There's snow again. No, he says, I can't even start again until June of 2015 because I got the money. I, I'm really curious to know what his excuse was. Like, why could he only start in June 2015? Yeah, like, that, that's a stretch because right. he says there's snow. I know that's BS, in my opinion. Most of the world, in their opinion, will know that that's BS. But fine. Like, that, that's one level of BS. Have you ever had an employee what? tell you, I can't work for one whole month or three months because of the snow? Have you ever heard that? During June of 2015, approximately 25% of the entire job had been completed, despite the fact that Eugene Harrington had received approximately 80% of the payments. Defendant Eugene Harrington then discussed progress. Payments for additional monies with plaintiff Alan Lerner, father of plaintiffs Melissa Lerner and Erica Lerner. Defendant Eugene Harrington requested small payments per week of work, citing that he wouldn't be able to complete the project as he had no money to do what he had promised. What? So at this point, he had taken 80% of the money. He had done 25% of the work. And in spite of the fact that for over $100,000, he had only done 25% of the work, he did not have enough money. Now, at that point, the question must be asked, which is, what did you do? with $100,000. And this is purely opinion at this point. This is opinion and speculation. But to me, that sounds like a gambling problem or a drug addiction. I don't see how you could lose $100,000 that quickly if, as a contractor unless you are either addicted to drugs or addicted to gambling. Just my guess. Purely speculation. But it really does beg the question of what you did with that amount of money. So what we did is we realized that, hey, are you able to bring the materials? Now, with any other contractor, I would not ask you to bring them until they're done. But we're dealing with you. I Something seems fishy. I don't think, you know, I would ask for receipts, but I know you don't have them. Let's see if you at least bought the stuff that you said you did. When he was unable to produce the materials and did the dog and pony show of getting into his truck and riding about on the block pretending to pick them up, that was it for me. That was the moment where I realized that the money that I had given you did not go to materials and likely would never go to materials. And to those who may speculate and say, why didn't you wait? Sometimes you have a feeling, you have an intuition that you're getting screwed, in my opinion. And reading this, it seems like the exact same MO, except just with a job that cost almost 10 times the, the first contract that we gave him. This is like five or 10 times that contract amount. And this at 80, oh, 80% 80 of the money, 25% of the work, you could not continue without taking little more piecemeal payments. So it says over here, June 2nd, 1,000. June 22nd, 5,000. This is just like paying an employee piecemeal at this point, you know, for each week of work. It says new balances of June 28, 2015 was now $26,075. Plaintiff Alan Lerner bought theater chairs as per his discussion with defendant Eugene Harrington, who promised to take the full amount off the balance owed. Alan believed that if defendant Eugene had finished the job, it would be better than hiring a new contractor, so he agreed to defendant Eugene Harrington's request to assist with additional cash flow for remaining work. And this is where I talk about things like sunken cost fallacy, where I did something stupid. I did something dumb. Do you compound that? And you let it continue until it bleeds you dry because you did something stupid and you want to defend your action. I need to look back and realize I've spent 12 years in business. I've dealt with lots of scammers. I've dealt with lots of crazy situations I had to navigate myself through. I navigated myself through dealing with Apple represented by Kilpatrick and Townsend where they were probably paying $1,200 an hour for an attorney. Um, my name is Townsend. I'm calling from the law firm of Kilpatrick Townsend Stockton. Um, we represent Apple. And I'm calling to speak with Mr. Rothman. And I came out ahead. And I got screwed by who is, in my opinion, appears to be a common crook. That ain't even that smart. Time to admit it. Throw out the work that they did that's crap. Start anew. Don't trust. It's very, very important to not buy your own crap and try to justify your decisions or attach your identity to the bad decisions that you made so that you're now forced to salvage or save your bad decisions. Take your bad decisions, admit that you screwed up, move on. This person gave this guy 
over a hundred thousand dollars of a hundred twenty to a hundred forty thousand dollar job. He got twenty five percent of the work, and he is still giving the guy money because, in my opinion, he couldn't admit that he made a mistake and move on. But let's see how that finishes because he says that he thinks it would be better than hiring a new contractor. So he agreed to defendant Eugene Harrington's request to assist with cash flow for remaining work. June 29th, 2015, Allen bought the chairs, $4,900. Additional progress payment, June 29th, $2,500. Balance as of September 30th was now $18,625. Additional payments were made by plaintiff throughout September and October of 2015. September 30th, $2,000, $1,800. October 15th, $3,000. October 24th, $3,500. On October 18, 2015, defendant Eugene Harrington puts in writing an agreement which states, I agree to complete the project as outlined regardless of money left on the invoice. Now, note what they said. In 2014, he said, I'm not going to be able to do it until 2015. And they said, okay, but we're not going to give you any more money until you finish the work. We're not giving you more money until you do the work. And they went back on their word. And this is what occurred. They went back on their word to advocate for themselves. And what did he do? In my opinion, he bled them dry. I agree to complete the project as outlined regardless of money left on the invoice. Defendant Eugene Harrington executed the agreement because he and plaintiff Alan Lerner outlined a plan to have the project completed by Thanksgiving. I imagine Thanksgiving of 2015. Defendant Eugene Harrington represented that he has approximately two weeks of work left to complete the project. This is a meme, by the way. For any of you who are not familiar with this, who haven't dealt with contractors in the past, anytime someone says the job will be done in two weeks, they're memeing you. Run. It is no such thing. There's no such thing. If you're asking someone to hang shelves, see, there are jobs that can take less than two weeks. If you ask somebody to hang shelves and they say two days, if you ask somebody to replace a window and a frame, maybe three days, but if somebody says two weeks for a job, you're getting bamboozled, in my opinion. Represented that he has approximately two weeks of work left to complete the project, but he claimed that he couldn't work over the winter months because of the driveway! It's the snow! The driveway! Yeah. He now promised that the basement would be completed by Memorial Day 2016. And do keep in mind that this was a project where he told them that it was about 85% done. 85% done in the end of the year 2013. He's now saying it will be completed in Memorial Day of 2016. Additional payments were made by plaintiffs in May of 2016. May 10th, 2016, 2500. May 17th, 2016, 2000. Defendant Eugene Harrington demonstrated proof of work in progress and work completed by sending the plaintiffs photographs showing a fully installed theater room with projection box installed, screen installed, curtains on the side of the screen, lighting, etc. This is the part that actually broke my heart. And when Erica was reading this case, I could see the look in her face where she felt genuine sadness and sympathy for this family that she's never met. I could tell. Yeah, um, I was absolutely disgusted at this. When I was reading the, the um, story, it was heartbreaking because you can see that they poured money into this and they were paying him more and more frequently. If you look at the timelines, right, there were, there were times they were giving him like $5,000 a pop, you know, within the span of two weeks because they were so desperate and having this you know, this house completed. They had invested yeah. so much time and energy. However, the photos were not taken from the basement of the premises. Rather, they were taken from internet oh, pictures gosh. of such installation, clearly intending to deceive oh. and defraud the plaintiffs. This was not discovered until May 17th, 2016, when the plaintiffs went to the house. So when the plaintiffs went to the house, that's the point that they realized that not only did they pay over a hundred thousand dollars, over eighty percent of the money, for less than twenty-five percent of the work to be done? Not only were they paying him piecemeal because he screwed up all of the hundred thousand dollars he got. They were paying him hundred thousand here, two thousand here, five thousand here, whatever, for the work that he was doing. That's when they realized that this work wasn't even being it done. It was a sham. It was a sham. He was sending them pictures of something else that wasn't their house. After the May 17, 2016 payment, Eugene Harrington did not return phone calls, did not respond to emails, and did not do any more work despite being paid for 100% of the job. So at this point, it's been almost three years of a job that was supposed to take if 80% of it was claimed to be done after about two months, worst case, probably four, five, or six months. It's been almost 
three years, he took 100% of the money that they originally agreed to. He took most, if not all, of the money that they agreed to do in addition to the work that they were starting with. And this is a common theme that I noticed with him, is that if we're discussing the floor being finished, he'll try to upsell you on a counter. If we're talking about a counter, we'll try to upsell you on something else. And then when he's not able to finish it, what I found he would do is he'd say, hey, listen, you're asking me to change all these things. You're asking me to change all these things. No, we're not. You offered, as Steve said. You can't offer something and then say, the reason I couldn't do the first thing you asked me is because you asked me to do the second thing. You don't get to do that. Plaintiffs repeat and reiterate paragraphs 1 through 29 above with the same force and effect as if fully set forth herein. Plaintiffs had made all timely payments toward the contract to complete construction and remodeling of the basement at the premises. However, the construction services provided by the defendant were severely inadequate and incomplete. Plaintiffs have communicated to the defendant in all their complaints. However, to date, there has been no resolution. And to date here, it seems is February 8th of 2017. They never heard from him from May 17th to February 8th. 2017. So that's quite a bit of waiting for him to finish the job after they paid for the whole thing. It says, in fact, defendant Eugene Harrington has completely stopped construction at the premises and refuses to communicate with the plaintiffs in any manner. That, as a result of defendant's unsatisfactory completion of the job, plaintiffs incurred additional expenses to complete the remaining work. Defendants Eugene Harrington and Gotham City Solutions have breached the contract between plaintiff and defendant. Defendant had breached the contract by accepting payment from plaintiff and not completing construction and remodeling services so contracted for. Plaintiff has cause of action in breach of contract. By reason of the foregoing, plaintiff is entitled to judgment against defendants for breach of express contract in the amount of $100,000, with interest from the day of default plus reasonable attorney's fees costs and disbursements and so on and so forth and the rest of it just winds up being a bunch of legal stuff defining unjust enrichment blah 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 de, blah de, blah the the part of this that's actually a story at this point is done but if you look into the case you will see that a on websites detailing the history of filing for bankruptcy this family is listed as a creditor because they were issued a judgment now one individual in my comments brought up an excellent point lewis that's one side of the story of, it's one side of the story. What if, what if your Yelp reviews were not things that you were not allowed to reply to and you just saw what customers said when they blatantly lied? Well, that's a great point. One of the reasons that I respond to reviews, sometimes when I screwed something up, sometimes when they're just incorrect, is I would like people to see both sides of the story. You can at least hear both sides and see what you believe. It looks to me from these documents, and this is just the voice of inexperience speaking, I'm not an attorney, I'm not an expert at digging through legal documents, but I will link below to the details of the case, that he did not issue a rebuttal. So I'm not able to read his side of the story because he did not present one. Similar to the bankruptcy, where he filed for it, but was declined it because he never followed up with the rest of the documents and showed up, at least from what I see, that's my interpretation my, uh, in my limited to zero legal experience reading the documents, it doesn't appear that he even showed up to defend himself. So I, if I get a review that says, you destroyed my stuff, I should at least respond to it and say, well, you had a cat piss on it, and it was corroding, and it was leaking piss when you gave it to me. There's, there's a back and forth there. Here, there's no back and forth. I don't see any disputing of this. I don't see him saying, oh, you made that up. And when it comes to a judgment of over $100,000, you'd think the individual would at least show up in court and say, hey, by the way, you know, I, I have an interest in keeping this 100000 Here's where they got it wrong. But that didn't occur. In the absence of being able to hear from the defendant, I'm not sure what to think of this argument. It seems like they never collected on their judgment. But it does seem like they were issued their judgment in a court of law because no counterarguments were ever even presented. When people ask, well, you should have let him finish the job. How can you judge whether or not it would have come out well if you don't let him finish the job? I know his employees think that he sucks, in my opinion. I know that he uses substandard materials and changes materials out and doesn't buy the stuff that you pay for and cheaps out on every little thing, worksmanship-wise and parts-wise, but you, might, you should give him a chance to finish it. I'm not going to figure out the way that these individuals figured out that they're not going to get the work and their judgment will never be collected on. I looked at the back of my checks that I gave to Mr. Eugene Harrington, and the stamp on the back is from a check cashing place. Check cashing facilities, as you may be aware, charge in somewhere from like a 3 to 6% fee to cash a check. And when you're talking about a check for $9,000 or $10,000 or $11,000, you're talking about three to $600 
just as a fee. Who does that outside of the type of individual that knows that if they deposit money in the bank, it's gone? If he had deposited that money in the bank, in my opinion, as my interpretation from the documents I read here, if he had deposited that money into a business bank account, that money would have went straight to the creditors. That money would have never went to him. It would have went directly to plaintiffs like Alan Lerner. It would have went directly to creditors like Wells Fargo, U.S. National Bank, the IRS, New York State Department of Labor. It would have never went to him. Individuals, in my opinion, don't take those steps of paying a five to $600 fee to cash a check just to hide money unless they need to. The actions that he took were the actions, in my opinion, of a scammer, a scam artist, who knows what they're doing, who has done it before, and who, if this type of information is not put at the forefront of every search engine, will likely be able to do it again. I'm able to find his bankruptcy filings after I did my videos as result number two and three. It's amazing how SEO works when you link to things. That didn't show up before. All these documents are public, but you gotta dig, dig, dig. Hopefully, the next person that's given a positive referral from someone that they know and trust, when they put this into Google, they find a bit more.